Hello, it's Rob Brown with Rob's Vlog once again. And last week we talked about storage of gasoline over the winter months. This week I'd like to talk a little bit about oils and what type of oils you should be using and why. A lot of people will ask, why buy an eight or nine dollar quart of oil when I can go to my local Napa store and buy a quart of oil for four or five dollars? And what's the differences in them? And there are some very uh, profound differences in them. Really, it comes down to the piece of machinery. The oil that you would use that's basically an automotive oil that's rated, if you look at it, they have an SAE rating on the front of it. SAE, this says 10W30 on it. And that's basically Society of Automotive uh, Engineers. And they rate that to a minimum standard so that it operates and lubricates your, your car engine properly. Uh, with outboard and, and marine engines, Merc Cruisers, uh, Volvos, they operate very differently in a very different environment. Um, and it requires a special additive for some of the issues that they, they are having to deal with on a regular basis in the, marine, uh, in the marine environment. One, of course, it's the marine environment. Most of it is really uh, designed more for salt water, being around salt water where a lot of the engines, most of the engines, are working at basically water level, and a lot of the air that is coming through that engine or being drawn into that engine has a high moisture content to it. Could be salt, could be fresh, but it ends up basically through the intake system into the crankcase. Uh, there are basically special additive packages to that to work on those corrosive abilities inside the engine to keep that from, uh, from eating your engine from the inside out. Also, marine engines run at a much higher RPM range, where anywhere from 4,500 to 6,000 RPMs, your automobiles going down the highway could be 23, 2,500 RPMs uh, prior to shift and maybe as high as 3,000. There's a shear effect that goes on with the molecules in oil. Uh, and outboard or marine, <coughs> marine engines basically have a shear element built into them to help that breakdown so that you're not losing your viscosity, you're not losing your lubricating capability. So, a little bit of an opposite where your automobile runs at a higher temperature, your outboard runs actually, or your, your Merc Cruiser, will run at a lower temperature, uh, generally 160 or below. Uh, automobiles could be around 210 generally. Uh, the reason for this is salt water crystallizes at 170 degrees. Uh, if the engine is, is allowed to run higher than that in that particular environment, what would that do? It can lead to uh, cooling passages basically being shut down and the cooling aspects of the engine allowing it to overheat But because of those blockages. Uh, the regular engine oils basically are made to flow. Marine engines oil, oils are made to flow at a much lower temperature where your automotive engine basically running at a higher temperature, the flow characteristics have to kind of stay the same in order to lubricate properly, so they have to be formulated differently. The last is, is really a, a load issue, where your engine, it's, it's been talked about, say, on a towboat, where it would be reminiscent on your, your truck of pulling that towboat uphill at 80 miles per hour. It's that kind of load, there's that much extra load on an outboard or a stern drive engine, a towboat engine. And for that, it really requires uh, an additive that helps it to uh, stay lubricated and not shield the molecules, as we had talked about. And that's basically brought in, into uh, play. So there's a lot, of, there's an additive package to this that basically makes a marine oil a marine oil. Uh, if you were to use an automotive oil, in your outboard or your stern drive engine, you're going to reduce the life of it, basically because it's really just not designed to work with the way the engine is designed. Uh, what oil do you choose? First, my recommendation would be to purchase the, the oil that you have for whatever engine you happen to own. Uh, if you own a Mercury or a Merc Cruiser, that's what I would use. A Honda, Yamaha here, uh, if you have Suzuki, Tahatsu, whatever it is, I would go to brand specific. Then what viscosity, what oil should you use? I would then reference your basically your owner's manual. And 
in your owner's manual you'll find an area, at least something that says along the lines of fuel and oil. This is a, uh, a owner's manual to a 154 stroke Mercury and what it tells us here is that uh, the oil recommendation on this particular engine is a National Marine Manufacturers Association uh, four-stroke water-cooled uh, engine. They prefer really a synthetic blend in this uh, 2540 multi-viscosity four-stroke oil is recommended for commercial general usage and all temperature use. That would be your first choice. Uh, in some cases here in the Northeast where we're running cooler, we're not in a high uh, temperature application, uh, 1030 would be a, would be an acceptable uh, an acceptable uh, alternative and multi viscosity again. Uh, I brought up the National Marine Manufacturers Association. They're the governing board or the, the board that certifies marine oils to at least a minimum standard. And what you'd see on that is there's always a little label. It's a diamond shape here, and that's the logo. And hard to see from there, but it has that NMA. NMMA logo certified with the FC with the water cool, the water droplet on it, where that basically is who governs that and they build it to a minimum standard to make sure it has those additives in it so that you have good protection on that motor oil that's, that you're using. Here you'll see that it's an SAE, that's the uh, Society of Automotive Engineer for the car. So the real key is consult your, your, your uh, owner's manual go to the brand specific that you're going to for your particular engine that you own and then make sure that you put the right quantities use then again use a uh, OEM ma manufactured oil filter uh, that will give you your best chance for the longest duration the longest life of your engine so hey this is Rob Brown with Rob's vlog once again I hope this information is helpful to you